but I would say, you know, over the past, uh, you know, one to two ish years, uh, remote and hybrid are very, very much in demand, very, very much the most sought after jobs on our platform. This is an approximate, but around 10 to 15% of our the total job listings on exec thread are remote or hybrid. Um, it might be actually closer to 15 to 20% at this point, um, but it drives 50% of the clicks and applies. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Joe Meyer. He's the founder and CEO of ExecThread. Joe, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Kelsey. Yeah, excited to have you. So, Joe, why don't you start and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Joe Meyer. I'm the founder and CEO of ExecThread, which is the largest aggregator of uh, confidential exec level career opportunities, uh, VP through C-suite and board level and everything in between. Interesting. Tell me, tell me a little bit more and about how you how you got started with ExecThread. Yeah, so uh, I'm the founder, as I said before. Company's around seven years old, and I founded it uh, when I was at Apple, which uh, which acquired my last company that I was CEO of. And I was getting approached by a lot of executive recruiters at the time, as you probably could imagine, and uh, was actually finding myself more interested in the jobs that they weren't approaching me for, as opposed to the jobs that the recruiters were approaching me for. I.e., I surmised and correctly surmised that there are many, many, many uh, exciting exec level career opportunities out there that are being worked on by many executive search firms that you're not getting approached for, but maybe should be. Um, and I figured, you know what, there's probably an access problem here in this industry, i.e., you know, it's impossible for the candidate to access all of these confidential jobs because they are being treated as confidential. And I bet that pent up frustration uh, probably leads to pent up demand. Uh, and if I could figure out a way to aggregate uh, a lot of these job opportunities, I bet I could build a, a pretty large engaged community around it, which is what we've done. That's fantastic. And this might be a silly question, but for our listeners who may not understand, confidential doesn't necessarily mean government. It just means that the positions are currently filled and someone's actively looking, right? No, uh, no and no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it, it doesn't mean that it's a government job. Um, in fact, the vast, vast, vast majority of them are not public sector jobs. They're private sector jobs. Um, it simply means that it, it's an it's a open rec. It's a search for an executive uh, that's been uh, opened up by a hiring company that has usually retained an executive search firm to work on that search and find candidates for them and manage the search process. The vast majority of those executive search firms do not publicly post those jobs those job openings, uh, either on the hiring company website or on job boards. And therefore, the only way candidates can find out about them is if that recruiter or recruiting firm that's managing the search process proactively reaches out to you as a prospective candidate. The only other way you find out about the job is through word of mouth, um, you know, through other candidates who are being uh, approached that might mention it to you. I decided to take that word of mouth concept of candidates telling other candidates about jobs and put a megaphone around it and create a platform around it. Um, so we crowdsource the vast majority of opportunities that we find out about. And we have around 5,000 plus of these confidential listings on our site right now. Would you say that one of the key challenges for, you know, people in the executive, um, you know, space search, um, executive search space rather, um, is that like you said, that lack of knowledge for, for what's out there? I don't know if it's a lack of knowledge. I think there's an acknowledgement and a knowledge that there are opportunities out there and there's many more uh, opportunities out there than, than, uh, than you might think, but it's how to access them, right? If they're not being posted anywhere and you're not being approached for the job, then how do you find out about it? Now, the interesting thing here is, is you know, as I created and developed as I, my, me and my team created and developed this idea and expanded on it and um, 
and scaled it, you know, we realized that this issue of accessibility or access um, is really most pronounced in certain, you know, constituency groups. Uh, women, people of color, underrepresented candidates face, you know, uh, an access challenge even more so than other constituents. Obviously, you know, you're looking at me. I'm not a, I'm not a person of color or uh, underrepresented. Um, but I was feeling the pain myself. I was feeling the frustration. And I thought to myself back when I started the company, hey, if I'm feeling frustrated and I'm not even in an active job search and I don't really even need a full-time role, uh, a new full-time role, uh, imagine if uh, I was in need of a full-time role, I was actively job searching, the clock was ticking, then I'd really be frustrated with this lack of access. So. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm curious to pick your brain a little bit, Joe, in this post pandemic world, you know, the, the job market, I, you know, I think has the, the shifts have changed significantly. And I'm curious to see, have you noticed any trends or shifts um, in the executive hiring landscape over, you know, the past year, two years, three years? Yeah, the, uh, the executive hiring landscape definitely mirrors the state of the economy, but there's a lag factor. So, you know, as the economy went from very healthy to let's just call it shaky slash uncertain, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I would describe the period we're in right now, um, i.e. We, we don't know if we're coming or going, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely not a bull market. Mm -hmm. um, as we made that transition, I, I should say as the market, macroeconomic market made that transition from bull to, you know, more bearish, mm -hmm. the exec level hiring landscape remained bullish uh, for quite a while after the economy was making that transition. Mm -hmm. So there's that lag factor. But, you know, we, because we aggregate and source uh, these jobs, you know, you know, as the economy ebbs and flows, we either see a higher, you know, influx of jobs or a, you know, less jobs, depending on the state of the economy. Um, you know, I would also say that, you know, board roles are, is a very uh, hot topic right now. And accessibility um, is, a, a, you know, an equity and inclusion is, a, you, know, uh, you know, very much top of mind these days. And the demand for these board roles is very high, mainly because these board roles traditionally have been, you know, very much uh, uh, kind of an old man's club sort of uh, approach. And I think as exec thread and other analogous platforms start to put more of a light on these opportunities, it creates more equity uh, for all candidates. Mm -hmm. And do you tend to see changes in, you know, as the, as the economy shifts, like you said, kind of ebbs and flows, do you see changes in what positions people are searching for? Like you said, you know, there's recently, not recently, but there tends to be, you know, right now, diversity, equity, and inclusion is, is at the forefront. Um, do you yeah. tend, do you tend to see, you know, changes in, in what people are looking for? I wouldn't necessarily so mu say so much on the functional level or on the geographic level or even on the industry level, but I would say, you know, over the past, uh, you know, one to two ish years, uh, remote and hybrid are very, very much in demand, very, very much uh, the most sought after jobs on our platform. I, I don't, well, this is an approximate, but around 10 to 15% of our the total job listings on exec thread are remote or hybrid. Um, it might be actually closer to 15 to 20% at this point, um, but it drives 50% of the clicks and applies. So, you know, think about that 15 to 20% of the listings, which are hybrid, you know, and remote drive half of the total applies and clicks on the platform. So it, it, that mirrors trends, right? You know, um, you know, greater than 50% of employees out there want to work in a flexible work environment, whether it be, you know, hybrid or remote, mm -hmm. even though, you know, far fewer of them get to do so, but from an aspirational perspective where they want to work next, you know, they're gravitating towards those remote and hybrid jobs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's all the way at the, you know, the top of the ladder as well. That's not even addressing, you know, how the the lower level, I don't, well, I don't want to call them lower level employees, but how, you know, people, you know, below, below leadership feel as well. So, I uh, totally agree. Um, I think it, it's top to bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, kind of taking it back to exec thread, I think you said, you know, you guys, you know, exec thread has been around for, I think you said seven years. Um, so I'm curious talking about like the challenges and hurdles that you've encountered, you know, we talked a little bit about the lag in the economy. What were some of the challenges or hurdles that you encountered while scaling exec thread? To be quite honest, monetization. Um, you know, it might sound funny to hear that uh, a, a platform focused on you know, exec level hiring has a challenge with monetization. We don't currently have a challenge with monetization, but in the early days, figuring out what the right revenue model was. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was more so because we wanted to keep this a scalable platform, a uh, digitally enabled platform, um, a self-serve platform. Uh, and there were opportunities to transition exec thread to more of a managed service or a professional service, i.e become the recruiter of the talent, become a recruiting firm. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, I don't think the world needs yet another recruiting firm. Um, I think what we're doing, which is building a community of almost nearly a million executives at this point that are exec thread members, registered members, who gain access, scalable access to jobs that are otherwise not accessible, is providing a, a greater good and, and more of a value prop than if we were to just, you know, work on, you know, dozens of searches for a few companies every year. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I think that's, you know, a, a good valid point that, you know, I think our listeners will appreciate your insight on that, but, you know, Joe, as we start to wrap up this conversation, what's, what's next for exec thread? Are there any exciting things down the line? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's funny you ask because we've been spending a lot of time over these past few months and past few weeks, um, really strategizing about 2024. And, you know, the reality is, is there's not many platforms out there, if any, that can say they've uh, built a community of nearly a million executives. Uh, I can't think of any, to be quite honest. LinkedIn excluded, which <laughs> they're in a different that, category. That's not, yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, um, you know, the hardest part of building a community is you know that uh, dynamic between the supply and demand, and what comes first, chicken or the egg. And you know, at this point, we have a large, engaged, high-caliber audience. And we can start providing value uh, to that audience um, in in more ways than we're currently doing. And, you know, I think there's an opportunity to really extend the exec thread brand beyond just jobs, beyond just a job seeking platform. Um, and I think we have the audience to do it. Um, and I'm excited to pursue that. And me and my team are excited to pursue that dream. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Well, Joe, like I said, this has been a terrific conversation. I appreciate all of your insights, your expertise, your experience. Is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with before we head out? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm assuming, you know, a decent percentage of your listeners are either entrepreneurs themselves or aspirationally uh, seeking entrepreneurship opportunities. And I would just encourage them to, to do it. Just do it. Um, don't overthink it. You know, pursue your passion. You only live once. And, uh, you know, you got to be happy with what you do. And, no matter how challenging entrepreneurship is, and it's been certainly challenging for me, ups and downs, uh, you know, victories and defeats, uh, no regrets. So that's fantastic. Well, Joe, like I said, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Business Ninjas. I really appreciate it. And I know our listeners will appreciate your insights. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, great to have you. 